politicians around the world are trying to gradually reduce the usefulness of cash until they can eradicate it completely. It scares the hell out of governments to have people in control of their own money, at which point you should really ask yourself, what kind of government is that? The whole thing about currency is that you don't need to know how it works unless it stops working. And when it stops working, everybody needs to know how it works because your wealth, your future of your children, everything now depends on that. If we go to a future where digital cash is the only form of cash that exists, and I think we're heading in that direction very, very fast. I think within 20 years, uh, people who grow up 20 years from now will never see cash unless they visit a museum. Cashless society. Cashless society. Cashless society. Cashless society. Cashless society. Cashless society. If we go to that future, digital cash, we're at a crossroads because we have to choose between two possibilities. One is digital cash that's run by corporations that act not only as intermediaries in all of our payments, but also act as deputized members of law enforcement for every government and or intelligence agency and or dictator who co-opts them to their means. That type of finance is, takes the, the worst of surveillance capitalism and the worst of surveillance states, merges them together in this fascist dystopia where every transaction you ever may tell something about your habits, your politics, your associations, your movement, your physical location. On the one hand, all of this data gets collected and shared among all of the intelligence agencies and corporations, or leaked. And on the other hand, if the people in power choose to, they can decide to debank you overnight. They turn off the switch. Now imagine what happens if your bank account is shut down and cash doesn't exist. Well, you can't eat. You can't buy food. Done. You can't use transportation. You can't rent an apartment. You, you, they can literally destroy your life in a second. And if you think this is crazy, this is happening today in China. They have a system called Sesame. It's, it's a, called a social credit score. And they use your social media postings to give everyone a score as to how well they toe the line of political correctness to the doctrine of the lead of the Communist Party. People who have a negative credit score on that system are denied access to public transportation. They're denied access to airlines, they're denied access to trains, they're denied access to jobs in the government, they're denied access to apartments to rent. They're doing that today. Now, today those people have cash to go back on. What happens when there's no cash? If the only people who are allowed to be intermediaries are the large corporations, they will commit the crime. It's like if you want to rob a bank nowadays, the best way to do so is to have a banking license. Then you can rob the entire bank and or country um, with complete immunity uh, or impunity. If you rob one person and steal 20 pounds from them, you're going to jail. If you rob two million people of their homes and mortgages, Right? You're not going to jail. You're getting a 10 million bonus from the bank and you're retiring in peace and quiet in the countryside. There are two ways to express power in this world, uh, voice and exit. When voice is no longer sufficient, and sometimes even when it is, exit is a more powerful expression. And exit means get your money out of the system, get yourself out of the system, uh, and reduce your exposure to the ridiculous system as much as you can. Bitcoin is a means to switch from expressing power through voice to exit. This is one of the things that can compete with banks. And banks really need competition, right? They're way too comfortable with their power and established systems. As I've said many, many times, the election choices facing Americans were a choice between blue Goldman Sachs and red Goldman Sachs. You can choose the color, but Goldman Sachs is still going to be in charge. And if you think your vote is going to make a difference, you're, you're a fool. But in a broader sense, we live in a world that is very fragmented, where uh, money faces borders, um, very hard borders, strict lines of demarcation between countries and currencies. And you have these national currencies that are badly managed by governments and banks in countries where uh, there is very little difference between a government, a bank, and an organized crime syndicate, 
all three are the same. The governments are organized crime syndicates. And so what happens when they have a crisis is they take the entire population hostage with them. They shut down the borders, you, they create currency controls, you can't withdraw money from the ATMs, you can't exchange money for another currency. You go with the ship and sink down with it. Bitcoin is one of those things that actually offers a safe haven in that particular situation. But it also allows people who have never had a bank account to connect to a global financial system. And Bitcoin bypasses all of that. It gives everybody a currency that is open and global. That creates some very interesting conditions in the world. It allows us to, to create a kind of unified financial system that exists outside of the mandates of government, that is completely private and is very empowering for individuals. And it scares so, the hell out of governments and banks. It scares the hell out of governments to have people in control of their own money. At which point you should really ask yourself, what kind of government is that that doesn't believe in freedom of association, freedom of expression, freedom of commerce? Um, that's more of an indictment of that kind of government than it is of, of Bitcoin. If your government is afraid of Bitcoin, you should ask yourself, what kind of government do I have? Creating a currency that does not belong to a nation seems weird at first. Um, but then again, you know, we used to have airlines that only existed for one nation and had the flag on the tail, right? Flag carriers, they called them, and phone companies that, that were monopolies in one nation and had the flag on them. And now that seems absurd. And I think within 20 years, the idea of national currencies as the only option will seem absurd. So Bitcoin is a currency that exists on the internet. Uh, that is created on the internet that um, really serves the needs of the internet generation. It does not belong to any government. It's not controlled by any bank. Um, Bitcoin isn't a company or product or a service. Uh, it's an internet protocol. It's a method of communication, just like we say the web or email, and that doesn't belong to anyone. It's a shared common public good on the internet. Um, Bitcoin is a digital currency and payment system that is a shared good. Um, and it is controlled collectively by the participants in the network. 